Hello, friend. I am looking forward to what the Lord has on the docket for us today. Some weeks ago, we did, for what may have been the very first time, we did a deep dive into just a few of our gospel tracts. And today, we're planning on doing the same thing. That week of broadcasts resulted in a couple people reaching out to us and letting us know that they had accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, specifically as a result of this radio broadcast. And to those people, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your honesty in admitting that you weren't quite sure. God forbid something were to happen to you. If you slipped off into eternity, you wanted to get that settled. And I appreciate that so very much. We've hooked those people up with good local Bible-believing churches. We've got them into our discipleship program, and I'm excited about that. But I would hazard a guess that there are more listening right now that are in one of two camps. Maybe there are some that are Christians, people of the book, people that know that the Great Commission has been given to us, to Christians, to followers of Christ. But it could be that you aren't quite sure how to do that. You don't know what it means to evangelize. And it's not necessarily because you don't want to. It's just because you're not sure. And I can understand. It's difficult when you feel a little bit of trepidation, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of being unsure. How do you take that next step? Well, I'm going to talk through some of our gospel tracts that we give away for free. That's right, for free at Bible Tracts, Inc. Dot org. It's BibleTractsInc.org. You can order yours today. You can get a sample packet, one each of every gospel tract that we currently produce. But the one I'm going to talk about today, it's one of my favorite redesigns of recent days. It's called I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments, and it has a beautiful front cover on it. We recently printed tens of thousands of these. It's called I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments, and the front cover, it's striking. You can see what looks to be Moses holding those tables of stone, the Ten Commandments in his right arm. He has his left hand extended up towards God. It's almost like he's preaching these Ten Commandments to the children of Israel, and he's standing on a mountain. It's stylized. It's beautiful. I think you'll want to get this one on our website, but What's wrong with just thinking that keeping the Ten Commandments will result in an eternity in heaven? Well, we're going to talk about that in just a moment, but I mentioned two camps. There may be some out there listening right now that aren't sure how to evangelize. Well, the point of this week of broadcasts is to show you how easy it is. I'm literally going to go through a gospel tract with you. Now, we'll extemporaneously talk a little bit. We'll riff off some of the concepts in here. But in reality, a lot of what I'm going to say is going to be lifted straight from the pages of these gospel tracts. And I want to show you how easy it is to explain the blessed gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost soul. But there may be some in another camp. There may be a few under the sound of my voice at this moment that if they were honest with themselves, did not know for sure their eternal destiny. There is no greater a decision that you could make today than to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And in just a moment, I'm going to explain to you how you could do that. I'm keeping the Ten Commandments. Is that the end-all, be-all? Is that a proper response? Well, we'll find out in just a moment. I'm going to ask you if you would, maybe you could turn to the book of Galatians. There are multiple gospel verses, multiple scripture verses in this gospel tract that are pulled from the book of Galatians. So if you'd like to follow along, just so you know what I'm saying is actually biblical. I don't mind at all if you double check me against the scriptures because my desire on the Bible tract echoes radio broadcast is to be in all things scriptural. Before we jump into this gospel track, let me give you a quick 30-second invitation. Saturday, November 13th, 
We're having an open house at the Bible Tracks Incorporated property, the new BTI property. It's in Odell, Illinois. The address is this. I'll give you a moment if you need to grab a paper and pen. Here's the address. 603 West Prairie Street. That's Odell, Illinois. O-D-E-L-L, Illinois. 60460 Saturday, November 13th from 1 to 5 p.m. Central Time. All are invited. I would love to see you there. At the end of the program, we'll tell you more about how you can RSVP. Now, let's talk about this gospel tract. I'm keeping the Ten Commandments. Let me ask you, think about this for a moment. Is that the answer that you would give right now If somebody asked you, how are you going to get into heaven? Think about that. I'm talking to you. Let me ask you that question. How would you get into heaven? There might be one that would say, honestly, you know, five minutes ago, if you would have asked me that question, I would have said, I would have answered, well, I'm keeping the Ten Commandments and that should be good enough. But now you have a sneaking suspicion that maybe, just maybe, The Bible doesn't quite line up with that way of thinking. So, I'm keeping the Ten Commandments. Would that be your answer? More importantly, is that the right answer? Is that the correct answer? Well, by way of explanation, let's jump into this. God gave the Ten Commandments specifically to show us that we, you and I, all of us, that we are sinners. The book of Galatians, maybe you have your Bible nearby. Turn there, the book of Galatians, chapter number 3 and verse number 24. Galatians 3, 24 says this, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. You see, the law, it's a good thing and has a God-ordained purpose, but that purpose is not to get us into heaven. The purpose of the Ten Commandments is, is to show us our sin. It is to, if we continue in Galatians 3.24, it is to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. You see, God gave us his standards, the gold standards of righteousness in the Ten Commandments so that we can measure ourselves. Think of it as a yardstick. And just as a yardstick accurately measures a piece of wood, so do the Ten Commandments measure our lives, your life and mine. We like to look at the commandments that we're keeping, but we need to pay special attention to the ones we are breaking. The book of James chapter 2 verse 10, I'll, I'll read it for you. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. You say, hold up a second, that sounds a little harsh. You're telling me if I keep the entirety of God's law, forget the Ten Commandments, I'm saying if I keep the entirety of God's law given to us all through the Bible, and yet if I offend, if I disobey, if I'm unrighteous in one small point, you're telling me I'm guilty of all? That's what the Bible says. Here's a question for you. Have you obeyed all Ten Commandments every single day of your life? If not, the Bible clearly states you are guilty of breaking God's law. God said in Galatians chapter 3, verse number 10, if you jump forward just a little bit, Galatians 3, 10, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things. All things which are written in the book of the law to do them cursed, the Bible says. Goodness, that does not sound very good. If you were dangling over the Grand Canyon by a chain with 10 links in it, you might feel safe. Maybe those links are big and sturdy and hardy and and they look like they can hold you. But if only one link breaks, you fall to your death. Because you have already broken You and I, if we're honest with ourselves, we've broken at least one of the Ten Commandments. We've already failed. You and I were already dead in our sins, and we cannot change the fact that we have broken God's law. You are a sinner and under the curse of God's law. 
Galatians 3.13, another verse from that chapter, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Christ was nailed to that wooden cross of Calvary to be your substitute. Here's a big word for you, vicarious. Jesus Christ died a vicarious death. What that means is that he died in our place, substitutionary. Jesus Christ bare our sins in his own body on the tree, 1 Peter 2.24 says. Here's another verse from Galatians 3.11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. You may be pleased with how good you're living. You may be the most upright person in your whole town, in your whole county, in your whole state, but you have a problem. Your life will not be measured by you, my friend. It will be measured by God. In God's sight, you have failed to keep all his law. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.20, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But, and here's where the good news starts. But, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's Romans 5.8. Christ Jesus died to pay your sin debt. He took your curse on himself. If you're looking for scriptural proof, look at Galatians 2.16. But realize, friend, that salvation is by and in Jesus Christ. He died for you. He was buried and he rose from the dead as proof that only he can give eternal life. So let me ask you, friend, have you ever received that free gift of the gospel? Would you like to receive Jesus right now as your Savior? John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. If you'd like more information, if you have questions about anything we've talked about today, maybe you're just listening along and you want to RSVP for the open house, well, we'd love to have you come. But more importantly, maybe you need to get your salvation settled. I'm going to give you a phone number right now that you can text. It'll go directly to me. I would love to correspond with you just like so many others have. Here's that phone number. Are you ready? 309-316-7240. 309-316-7240. Have a great day for God's glory. We'll talk to you very soon. God bless. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.